AF TV, um, does it feel like a defeat to you? Absolutely. It does. It does feel like a defeat. It does sting. Um, it is at home. Um, you know, like three games in, at home to Fulham. You really want to be winning these games, and that's no disrespect to Fulham. We have the quality to be beating them. You know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, like, but at the same time, there's a few things I want to bring up here yeah, because I've, I've I've heard a lot of people talk about the system, right? So. The thing is, right, how many formations have City played in the last four or five months? They've played, oh, no. they've played three at the back with uh, John Stones playing in, in the midfield role and then dropping into the right back position. They've played with a four at the back, but with uh, proper full backs like, like a Carl Walker um, and a Rico Lewis. But then they've also played four at the back where they've used um, Ake or Akanji or Stones who are centre backs in the full-back positions so that when uh, wing wingers isolate those players because they have the positional sense of a defender they, they are able to mark them better and then last week because um, Kevin De Bruyne's injured they played a 4-2-3-1 so they put Alvarez just behind Haaland now let me tell you something right everyone I've heard has come on and has said I don't like these experiments but the guys that just won the treble are experimenting. Yeah, yeah? No, no, but yeah, but that is Man City. No, but that is Man City. But no, no, but, 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 but let me get to the point, right? The thing is, the thing is, right? The thing is, last season, at the beginning of last season, right? Everyone was saying that City don't look like the City of old. Yeah, that the, they haven't come out the traps how we expected them to, and we were saying that because they were trying new things. Yeah, and you know, Daps, yeah, uh, who comes on? I, I speak to him all the time. You know, when they drew or they, they lost to Brentford, drew to Everton, I was, I was giving him all that, yeah. And he was saying, listen, it's January. I know Pep's trying new things. I know he's putting players on the pitch now because they're going to be called on at the end of the season. And those match minutes that they've got at the beginning of the season and these system tinkering things that we've done at the beginning of the season, if we need to do it at the end of the season to see the season out, they're going to be able to do it. Whereas if you do it cold at the end of the season because someone's injured, then you're going to be in trouble. So the last two seasons, Tavares, yeah, when, when Tierney got injured, Tavares got thrown in with no match, no game time at the end of the season. He got thrown in yeah, and he got thrown to the Wolves. He got thrown in at the business end of the season mm. where the most pressure is there to perform and he's had no minutes and he's playing in the system. He has he's not had any time to like grasp and adapt it. Last season, our season fell apart when? When Saliba got injured, right? When Saliba got injured, there was no alternative to what we do when he's there that was good enough. Yeah, and again, holding's being thrown on at the business end of the season when the most pressure is on, yeah, and, and because he's not been bred into like playing the way that we need to play, that's where it fell apart. Now, listen, if you're one of the guys that has come on today that has said, I don't like the tinkering of the system, that last, last season was saying, we tried the same thing, but there's no plan B, I don't want to hear your talk. Facts. I don't want to hear your talk. Facts. Because this is the thing. This is what people do, yeah? Like, like, like it, with the benefit of hindsight, we will say things, but we won't think about what we were saying three, four, six months ago, yeah? And the reality is, City are the best team in the world at the moment, and the reason why they are the best team at the moment is because they keep the opponent guessing. And the thing is, there will be teething problems. Of course, there will. But what about yeah? he's, he's, of course, uh, there will. Of course, there will be teething problems. Yeah, we're and being kept guessing. With them, I mean, I mean, with you them, make there a, were teething problems. Yeah, yeah? yeah. yeah. it was no yeah. different. It was no yeah. different. You know, you yeah? make you make a you make you make you make a. The thing is, right? Make a great point, right? Oh, one one second. I'm not saying. One second, one second, one second. You make a great point, even when you're talking, because I was thinking about it today with Gabriel, and I was like, Gabriel being left out at the moment, and then I was sort of remembering back with City last season when they were leaving out Walker. And like all of their fans were saying, why is he leaving Walker out? But then he came well. in towards the end and he, he played a vital part. So you do make a, um, a good point. But there is also the point that you need to there's this games. thing that you want to win. You, you need to win games. Yeah, there needs to be and if he ain't broke, don't, don't you know. Of course. But the thing is, uh, like, so of course, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But if Jesus is out and if Zinchenko is out and they're vital parts of how the old system works, you have to, you have to, you have to do something different, right? Mm. Like, I think we're all forgetting this. Like Zinchenko, yes, he was on the bench today and yes, he came off the bench. I don't think if, if Arteta felt he was 100% match fit, ready to play for 90 minutes, he plays today. Jesus the same. Yeah? And I think, I think that's what we need to not lose sight of. You know, the, the, these players like Zinchenko, when he inverts into the midfield, makes the midfield stronger. 
defensively, like obviously it's a trade-off, yeah. But obviously he's a very important part of how our system works. And Jesus as well, when he drops in that with a false line position, when he drops in the midfield, other players get a, like he brings the centre back with him. Saka and Martinelli get the space in behind him. Like that's an important thing, part of how our system works. Now, obviously I love Nketiah and I love Trossard. I love all three of them. But obviously, like. Niketia and Jesus don't do those same things. Niketia wants to get in behind, yeah? Like, so you lose a bit in build-up with Niketia, but you gain that with Jesus. But I think is a better finisher than Jesus, you know? So it's different, it's horses for courses. And I think, like, as you get into your stride of knowing when and how to apply both, both will be needed. There'll be different games where, where you need to use both of them. And I think what we need to understand is that Adaptation is needed. Like last season, we had a system that worked. We had 11 players. Yeah, 11 players played too many games for one. Saka played too many games. Yeah, and they got burnt out. And when you don't have alternatives to your to your main plan, you will come unstuck. Yeah. So so I think what Arteta is doing now is he's trying things that he might be called upon needing to use later on in the season, because in the same way that that obviously Pep and other great managers have. Yeah. And now we've got the squad to do it. We've called for depth. Yeah. We've called for players to be brought in so that we can you know, have more depth and more quality. Then uh, what's the point bringing depth in if we're not going to try and understand how we can yeah. utilise the depth? All right, listen, I'm going to ask you one last thing really quickly because I've got loads of, loads and loads of people to bring in. But you know what? You made some great, great points. But I want to ask you this quickly. Havertz. Yep. You've heard a lot of fans there. They're very indifferent with him. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's this position? Why do you think, you know, so it's a heavy investment, not the most popular one when he no. came in. He's not so far got fans off their seat. No, he hasn't. Right? What, 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 what do you, where do you stand on the Havertz situation? Still early, obviously, but where do you stand? Where do you see him playing? Why, why do you think the manager was so keen to bring him in? Um, I think the manager was keen to bring him in for a number of reasons. So he's like, what, 24-25, he's a Champions League winner. You know, like he's played many games for Germany at international level for someone his age. And um, he can play in a number of positions. And I think, you know, also that experience of winning, actually winning, like the, to create a winning culture, you need people that have actually put their hands around the big ears, like the Premier Leagues, like the, that have done it at international level. And we, we haven't had enough of that until now, you know, like, and I think with Havertz, I watched him play, I watched football from all the top leagues. Yeah, and I, like, I think a lot of people that have been speaking about him today, I don't know if any of, many of them watched him at Leverkusen. He played a midfield at Leverkusen, eight, 10, right wing uh, and then false nine as well and the second striker yeah right so it, it is the bundesliga but but but, 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 but the sancho performed in the bundesliga yeah, of course of course of course but the point the point i'm trying to make is yeah sancho when he was brought here he wasn't asked to play in a different role or position he was asked to play on the wing so in the Bundesliga, he was playing on the wing. So wait, wait. What so position is Havertz? Is he a centre forward? He's is he a midfielder. midfielder? He's a midfielder. Uh, he's a midfielder. Yeah. yeah. He's but, um, but, but the thing is, he's a midfielder. But at Chelsea, for the last twelve to eighteen months, he was playing where? All over nine. No, but where forward. did he predominantly play in the last twelve yeah, to eighteen you months? Yeah, talked about winning the no, Champions but, League. Where, where did Havertz win the Champions League? Play now. In he midfield. played as a centre forward. No, no, he, he was a midfield. centre forward. He was a midfield. That lineup. He was a midfield as a centre forward no, for Werner the game. Werner was a centre forward. Werner was left wing. Yeah. Werner was left wing. Havertz was centre forward. All right. Okay, they won okay, the Champions okay, League. Okay. They won the Champions League. They Havertz as a centre forward. They won the Champions League playing with him as a centre forward. So, so this buys into my point. Yeah, if he's been playing for the last twelve to eighteen months as a false nine, yeah, then obviously to revert back to playing in midfield, that's just going to take a bit of time. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Listen, I'm not saying he had his... Today, today was the worst of his three Premier League performances in an Arsenal shirt. Yeah, I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm not here, I'm not a Havertz stand. I'm not a stand for no one, yeah, but today was definitely the worst of his three performances, yeah, but, but, but I think, like, what we, I, I really do agree with what the last guy said. I think Zinchenko, and I think also Jesus, would help him play in that left centre mid role a lot more. Because Jesus dropping in and coming next to him and giving some like a foil to kind of bounce off. Havertz at uh, Leverkusen played really well when players were close to him and it's one, two touch very quick here. Yeah? And obviously what I've said is Niketia plays off the shoulder and wants to go forward. So th there's that separation between him and the forward man. And I think also 
there isn't quite that trust when like I think both Odegaard and Havertz today could have received the ball a lot in the half spaces but instead of doing that we played the ball across and got the ball out to Saka and, and Martinelli and what that does is if you give the ball to the guy in the half space then those guys can make the runs behind Saka and Martinelli but the ball is going out wide yeah, so they can't make those runs behind because they're on the ball and they're having to do it with the ball. So I think there's, I think there's things that they just need to work out that's going to take time. But Havertz didn't have his best performance today by any stretch of the imagination. But some of the scapegoating that I've heard towards him today when he didn't make either of the two mistakes is absolutely disgusting.